Hi everyone, Nikki here. Today we're going to do a drawing tutorial on this moth. Um, beautiful creature. Anyway, the image is on my website. Details are on the screen now, so that's super. Just head on over and print it off. Uh, the equipment list that I'm using today is um, below this video in the info bit. Okay, let's make a start. So everything I do when it comes to drawing is break things down to their simplest form. So we always start off with shapes. And um, I'm going a little bit freehand here because I normally work out the top, the middle and the bottom, but today I'm just going to go for it. So we're sort of looking at these very simple shapes that are made up inside the moth. Um, I've drawn my centre line so that I know that I can sort of get you know, the same half on one side of my paper as on the other, so I don't sort of miss out half of a wing. And I'm just really focused on getting that very simple shape. So I'm looking at the wings first of all, and it doesn't matter if it's not absolutely accurate. This is the map. So this is the starting point. This is the bit where you're just sort of getting pencil onto that white paper and losing that sort of starting intimidation moment. So here we go. So I've sort of got my very simplistic shape. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking at the shapes that I can see inside the moth. So it's all part of his body, but at this particular moment in time, we're not thinking about him as a moth or a body. We're thinking about it as shapes and we're just literally breaking down all those little forms and those little shapes. Now, don't forget, this stage is not, you know, nothing's accurate. Uh, there's a sort of, hopefully, a little bit of a sort of a plan. But you've got to, you know, when you draw something, you must never just presume that that's it. You've put the pencil down and you've got it spot on. It's not like that. Things need to be changed all the time. And the more you are willing to rub something out and have another go at it, the quicker and faster you will learn and develop your skills. If you're not sure, measure. So the tip of the pencil goes against the part you want to measure and your thumb is a sliding scale also. And then just take that across and make sure you're sort of um, roughly the same, perhaps a little bit further out. Okay, just start to find your way. Now you'll also see that the every stroke I make when I come to draw is um, sort of done with confidence. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm feeling confident. I'm, you know, I sort of get nervous every time I sort of draw. Um, but you've got to sort of make those strokes nice and long and strong. If you do these tentative little dip, 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 dip strokes, um, you're concentrating too much on that and not enough on the subject matter. So by doing these sort of lovely, confident, strong, bold lines, um, I've got more time to look at the subject matter and again I'm not going to beat myself up if they're not in the right place at this stage. As I'm going through the drawing I'll be able to change things and uh, manipulate and develop my drawing that way. And this is the beginning stage, this is about getting down the map so that I'm filling my piece of paper and I've got my proportions about right. Right, so I'm just looking a little bit more into the body of the moth and bringing up some more shapes here. Now remember that your moth is a 3D form. We're looking at a photograph, so it's quite nice, it's been flattened for us a bit, but we're looking at a 3D form. And so those lines representing the shapes on his body are not going to be just horizontal, they're going to have curves to them, they're going to have form, they're going to have shape. And the more you can sort of respond to that, the faster you're going to get a really lovely feeling of a full-bodied drawing as opposed to a very flat image. Just keep, you know, just gently keep feeling your way around the painting, the drawing. Sorry, not painting, although I might paint it. Um, just really get a feel for it. Look at that lovely long straight line that comes down there. That's quite dramatic. That's going to really add some welly to the drawing itself. 
And you can see here, I'm not a massive fan of curves when it comes to drawing. I much prefer a straight line. Um, and the reason being is that the straight line is so much more dramatic than a curve. And so you can get a real sense of bam. I do like a little bit of welly in the drawing. Now, at the moment, whatever I'm doing on the right-hand side, I'm trying to respond to on the left-hand side. And in a minute, what's going to happen is, when I've got my map sorted out, I'm going to start working on the detail that I can see and refine the map. Um, but I'm going to work from right to left. But at this particular moment, the main aim is to draw the whole thing at the same time, so that I've got a really good placement and I really know where this moth is going to sit on the paper. Okay, so I'm getting my sort of kit and caboodle ready. I'm using a Palomino Blackwing Pearl pencil today. Um, they're really gorgeous pencils. Um, they're not cheap. In fact, they're three quid a pencil or something like that. Um, so they're not the cheapest pencil in the world, but my goodness, I just think they're the most delicious pencils. However, I don't recommend you necessarily have one. I just treated myself. I was at the Royal Academy. They've got them there. I just bought one, so it's delish. Um, but uh, I would be using, if I wasn't using this pencil today, I'd be using a B uh, and, a, and a 2B, 3B pencil. Probably a 3B. You can get the different tones in your pencil with the weight of the pressure on the paper. I don't like to use anything in the H range. I find it scratches the paper too much for me. Um, I can be heavy handed, but I've taught myself to be a bit light. And so I like a softer pencil. Okay, so now I've started off. And although my map is all still there, I'm now starting to refine those areas. So as I'm gonna go along, I'm just gonna keep working hard on what I'm looking at. So I'm doing the whole body to start with. Well, the top head of the body anyway. Now, really important as well when it comes to drawing is to uh, really look hard at the direction of the fur or the hair. That's going to give you a really good clue as to the shape of the subject. So if you uh, draw everything uh, vertical or horizontally, you're going to end up with a really flat image. So actually what you've got to do is to really observe the direction of the hair and respond to it with your pencil. So it's called drawing to form, painting to form, all those sort of things, is you really just react to the way you see the hair or the fur lying. So drawing, as I've sort of said a thousand times, is actually a learned skill. You can learn to draw, just like you can learn to read, learn to write. Um, it's all about practice. But the, the, the real key to drawing is not necessarily putting the mark on the paper. It's actually really switching on your observation skills and not taking anything for granted. Double checking everything you do. Every time you put that pencil down, you're just cross-referencing it with your subject matter to make sure it's in the right place. So I normally start off with a nice mid-tone shading, um, so nice and light, because then I can work out how far I can go with my darks, my, you know, the pressure. And also I've got my electric rubber, it's not really an electric rubber, it's a battery operated rubber. Um, here it is, look at it, thing of beauty and wonder. Um, and that will be able to lift out all the highlights really nicely and very crisp. Um, these little tools are just fabulous. Um, I'm not really normally into a gizmo, but actually on this occasion, these are the best ones ever. They, they're so powerful. They really pick the pencil marks off the paper really crisply, so you can get that really shining white back of the paper. 
when you normally use a, a, a standard rubber, um, it can sometimes smudge a bit. And, and also, because they're block rubbers, they're sometimes quite hard to get the definition with. Um, I do use a block rubber. I've got quite a few million. Um, I use the high polymer Pentel rubbers. Um, I actually really love them. And I also use my craft knife for cutting into the polymer rubber if I want to have certain sharp edges. So, you know, you can do that. They're re relatively inexpensive. So, you know, buy yourself five and then just keep cutting. Use one as the one that you cut into and then use the others as you're clean and you're not. Okay, so what's happened here is I need to cross-reference where those marks are starting against the body that I've already sort of determined on my moth. So as long as I can make sure that, you know, the marks that I'm looking at are meeting up with where they should do, on the body part they correspond correctly then I'm going to sort of be able to refine my picture and get it more accurate so you can see there that the, the place that I was starting with that dark mark was far too low and uh, so just cross-referencing it with the image the, the photograph I've been able to pull that back into the right place and that just goes back to that observation thing so yeah just draw this moth section by section so you're not overwhelming yourself with the whole image now i mean when we first all started and we had the map down perfect that that's a really great way to start to get a whole feel for the size and scale but when you start to go in with detail this is where you just need to focus on that little one area and respond to that at a time don't forget that you're going to be using a lot of concentration here so you know if you're not used to drawing all the time every 20 minutes every half an hour stop go for a wonder come back to it because you will get tired and if you don't rest your brain or rest your eyes from the subject matter you're just going to get um, lackadaisical and make some silly mistakes and what a shame when you've put in all that hard work for the first half an hour right here we go I'm just working my way down so what I'm doing here is I'm starting to find the fluffy fairy bits and respond to that. So little short um, pencil marks. Yeah, just and then go in when you see it. The other thing that's happening is I'm starting to find my darkest dark and it's really very much on the body part of this moth. And so once I've sort of got there and I've started to push my pencil in and, and press quite firmly, I can then ascertain how dark I can go with my pencil and that's my darkish point. Now the other thing that's most fabulous in, in uh, drawing or any form of um, composition is making sure that you've got your darkest darks next to that you've got something that's like the super light and so here on the moth I managed to find that the darkest dark is surrounded by a very bright light and so those two together will really set a nice tone. And again, just cross-reference everything as you go. It's just really good practice. And the more you do it, the more you're training and switching on your observational skills as well. There will come a point somewhere in your drawing where something isn't quite right and you can't really figure it out. And you'll, you'll spend ages and ages and ages rubbing out one thing and um, just a little word of advice, it very rarely is the one thing that you're rubbing out a thousand million times, it's something else. So when you get to a point in your drawing where you just cannot see what it is that's not right, that's really annoying you, there are a couple of tricks, okay? The first one is um, not really a trick, it's just a methodical part. So you'd go back to, you know, start point. Everywhere on your drawing you've got a place where you like... Um, it's like think about it like home in a game of tag so you know for me it's normally around the head or some sort of um, nice angle 
and I would go back to there. Here I go again, checking again that angle. Uh, I'd go back to there and then just make sure and work my way through the subject matter again to make sure that everything was in the right place. But actually a much quicker way of doing it is to get your mobile phone or to get a yeah an iPad and take a photograph of your drawing. And um, more often than not, you'll see it. It just, uh, if you're concentrating so hard on something, you lose sort of perspective. And by looking through it through the eyes of a different lens, normally it pops up and you think, oh, don't understand why I didn't see that earlier. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, leave you to enjoy this video. I think I've explained quite a lot. I mean, in and out, I will stop and I will point out some other things. But basically, it's just a case of really responding to everything you see where you see it. Do it in small sections. Try really hard not to sort of do everything all in one go. Just focus tightly on that one area as you go along, making sure that everything... You know, all your points match up against something else. And that you've got some good references going on. Just a little top tip before I go. There we go. Here it is. Try really hard not to use your hand to rub the um, rubbing marks off your paper. You're just going to smudge and smudge and smudge. So just, yeah, on the inside there where your hand is. And so the best thing to do is just get yourself a nice big brush and just brush it away. It's much more gentle, it's just as effective, but it's not making all those smudge marks everywhere. Right, enjoy. Don't forget, always sharpen your pencil. It's really easy to forget. Get a really nice sharp point.
okay so here we go I've done half of the moth um, and yeah I'm quite pleased with him I've made some lovely little marks using my battery operated rubber which are like little dots um, I've used my finger to smudge and I have just used the highlighter to really lighten up some areas um, enjoy second part coming up right now
Okay, so here he is, the finished moth, all shaded, drawn, lovely contrast between the darkest darks and the lightest lights. Please send me yours, I'd love to see them. Um, you can post it onto my Facebook page, I suppose, or you can email me, I don't mind. You can go via my website, which is nikkibell.co.uk. It's coming up on the screen now. Anyway, enjoy. See you later. Bye.